uh, because the crowd here is a lot more a uh, cocktail mature. Hello and welcome to Best Sips Worldwide. I'm your drinking companion, Susan Schwartz, an American travel writer living in London. Thanks to my mother's love of martinis, the first words I spoke were shaken, not stirred, and I've been obsessed by the history of cocktails ever since. Through the years, I've been lucky enough to sip some of the best made by the best. Hear that sound? It's time to cozy up to the bar and let me introduce you to the movers and shakers of the world's most famous watering holes. Rene Redzapi, Magnus Nielsen, and Marcus Samuelson may be the great chefs leading the Nordic food revolution, but our four guests today are right behind them, leading a coup of their own, behind the bar in Copenhagen, Oslo, and Stockholm. Gobo Hansen, Adam Gelib, Ludwig Renmo, and Andreas Bergman are shaking and stirring their way into world history, a taste of which they brought to London earlier this month as invited guests at Cocktails in the City, one of the country's premier cocktail events. As invitees of Woodford Reserve, the award-winning Kentucky bourbon, all four pulled out the stops making their own distinctive cocktail combinations. For my cocktail of the week, it's the Woodford Reserve Old Fashioned, the drink that made me fall in love with bourbon. Add two ounces of Woodford Reserve, a half an ounce Demerara sugar syrup, three dashes of Angostura bitters, and two dashes of Regan's orange bitters to a mixing glass filled with ice. Then stir, stir, stir for about 30 to 40 seconds. After that, strain into a serving glass filled with ice and then garnish with a lightly expressed orange peel. Now that you've got that in your hand, it's on to the interview. Um, so, so Ruby is based in, in Copenhagen. It's, uh, it's like of a... A, a bar um, where you walk into to our apartment, you get this uh, this nineties maybe prohibition a little bit style of, uh, in it uh, jazz soul music as well. When you walk into the bar, uh, old Chesterfield sofas um, there. Um, so we're only a cocktail bar, so we only do do, do cocktails and we do of course uh, seating as well. Um, don't do that much standing, a little bit standing, and then we have a, a basement. Uh, as well, where we have a, where well, it's actually been an old vault, so you walk into, to, so we've kept the, 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 the door from the vault that you walk into. Uh, first, first room is, it's like 10 square meters downstairs, uh, one, one table down there, and then you have booths, uh, cabinets all over the, the place, and then the next room you have a, you have a small bar in there as well, low ceiling that we use on, on the weekends. And when did you uh, start it? Um, so it's turning 10 this, uh, this summer. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so for, for 10 years, um, and we are, we're, we're, we're class, classic cocktail bar, but also looking to, to make modern, modern cocktails as well with, with again, the, the Nordic in, 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 in the DNA of, of the cocktail is that, we, that we do, so we use a, mo- a lot of, of local ingredients as well for, for the bar. Right and now. you're here in London doing? Yeah, so we're here in London yeah, doing a cocktail in, in the city with, with the other two bars, a, a Scandinavian uh, or Nordic uh, alliance, um, where we're doing a, a drink uh, on Woodford Reserve, that's like a twist on a, on a whiskey sour. Um, so of course with uh, Woodford Reserve bourbon, um, then a, a Calvados, that's like a, a apple brandy, a lemon juice, a, a maple syrup, a pasture bitters, and a, an egg white. So yeah, simple, a little bit sweeter, but still uh, still dry, a dry, fruity drink. Did you create that specifically for tonight? Um, we actually no, we actually we actually didn't. We had it already. We have actually had it on the menu before at Ruby, uh, but we f- we think it suits the events. A really, really nicely. It's a, it's a, it's a drink for, for the for, for the public. I would say it's it's not too sweet. It's not too sour. It's not a strong drink. It's not a bitter drink. So it's something that, that a lot of people can relate to. Uh, bartenders as well as 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 not bartenders uh, that we thought like this drink works really really well. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into bartending. Um, so, so I've been I've been living in, in the countryside of, of Denmark where I've been growing up for, for for the most part of my life. The twenty first years of my life, I'm twenty six, um, and uh, and it actually started when I was in in the gymnasium uh, where 
we went to um, to another gymnasium and saw they had this uh, Friday cafe after after school with alcohol with alcohol <laughs> in Denmark yes how old like, were you so we like uh, at that age we're like 17 years old okay. uh, 17 years old yeah 16 17 and, and 18 years and uh, and so we thought that's going to be that would be a really really great idea to have a raw school like the atmosphere was really really great and we didn't have that so we we uh, established one uh, and I was the I was in charge of that, so we, we built it from the from the ground and up, um, and of course got all these uh, these uh, 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 Smirnov and Bacardi breezes in, and just had beers and just made a, a fun room where people could have a, a good time in. Uh, I guess that's where you started mastering your uh, mixology skills. Yeah, well, it started it started around it started around there, but it was like it was like the, the first time I, I I really discovered like. That fact of actually serving people and hosting people as well—that's um, something that profession I would think was was fun. Uh, and I still think this day today, like keep think, think, uh, keep think, uh, things keep things simple as well. At, at that time, of course, things things get more complicated with age as, as well and and with the job. Uh, but that's where I got got like the, the passion for it. And I thought, like, great, this is what I this is this could be really fun. And then of course it turned into a to a to a to a part-time job and from a part-time job uh, I walked into Ruby one day um, I remember, still remember this day like I was 20 years old and I walked into it and it was the second cocktail bar I've ever been into but it was definitely a lot more fancy than the first one I was into and I was like completely astonished by the place and, and, and what the guys was doing in there and I was like wow and, and how do you find the crowds here in London? The crowds here in London well, are they different from the ones in uh, yes, in they, yes, they, they are, and uh, and it's it's definitely it's definitely in a in a good way as well if you if you ask me uh, because the crowd here is a lot more a uh, cocktail mature. The cocktail scene in Copenhagen is not that developed, so you, we're not that used to drinking cocktails, so we're a lot more behind. So drinks like martinis, the classic cocktails, uh, the more boozy cocktails for the alcoholics, as I would say, uh, is not, is not, that, uh, not that easy to, to sell and, and not that easy to understand for people as well. So it's still a little bit sweeter, moving in the right direction, definitely moving in the right direction, but you see a, a big difference in, in, in how... Uh, knowledge uh, like how far uh, how educated people over here are uh, drinking wise compared to to back in in Denmark and, and the rest of Scandinavia. Yeah. Okay. So I, I recently moved to, to Norway um, back in November, and I uh, I participated in a, a Campari competition for uh, the Nordic sector. So that was my way of introducing myself to the community there. And it was really exciting for me because I haven't done so many competitions. Uh, it had been like my second competition. Um, I did something local in London um, a few months before um, with Belvazar. It's a vermouth, a German vermouth. Um, and that, was, uh, that worked out really, really well. And uh, I had the opportunity to um, participate um, for myself um, in the Campari competition. So that's how I got to meet uh, Unisar general manager, um, who was a judge. Um, and I was so impartial to the whole experience because uh, I was like, an outsider. Everyone was so local, and you could feel from within the room it was uh, showcased in one of the bars, uh, the local bar uh, chair in Grinlocker. So in the north part, it's quite trendy, I guess. If I was going to uh, basically describe it to you, it'd be very similar to Shoreditch here in London. Okay. So quite trendy, um, and, like newbies, and you know, it's nice. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, how I was introduced to Eunice, the general manager. But I'd known of Hemkook and their reputation from the top 50 um, and through Monica Berg. So that was, uh, that was, our, that was my way uh, or my connection between us. Uh, so that was uh, my introduction to Hemkook. And from uh, coming in third uh, among the 15 participants from across the city in the competition, I guess they saw something in me, and I'm kind of glad, I'm really glad that they did. So, um, yeah, um, it was very, very short that I heard back from Unison, and that's how I got started um, working at Hemku, um, which is Norwegian for moonshine. Oh, okay. Moonshine, basically, so that was really... It's, is it's that a, the vibe? Is it a moonshiny, speakeasy well, kind it, of vibe? It, it, it's a it's, it's speakeasy speak style. Um, as you go in, it's, uh, there's quite a few facets to the, the building. Um, Basically, it's it, the main uh, the main uh, take 
from the bar, the main uh, concept is based uh, from the distillery, um, that we make 80% of all the spirits that we have in our back bar. So uh, we make our own gin, vodka, akavits. You must um, be one of the only bars... You know, one, of the, one, of the, one of the very few, from, from my Did knowledge you know? anyway, no. I think it's uh, one of the very few concepts that have uh, come to fruition um, in the bar, in the cocktail renaissance, uh, as it has been for the past 10 years, um, very recently. And uh, quite recently, um, there's, before Himku, there wasn't, um, I don't believe there wasn't any uh, bar distilleries at the, at the current time, so it was kind of in innovative and groundbreaking, especially for Norway, since they're... they're the, the, the supply of alcohol is monopolized by the, the government. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's quite groundbreaking in that sense. If you go to Norway, you'll understand. Uh, I hope you, I can't wait to see you next time you come to Tulsa. Uh, that'll be cool. That'll be very cool. So what are you doing here for Cocktails in the City? For Cocktails in the City? Um, yeah, we're, just, uh, we're pairing with uh, Woodford Reserve, uh, Brown Foreman, obviously. Um, we're pairing uh, the Kentucky Straight Bourbon uh, with the flavors um, that we... I think would contribute to the overall profile of the, the characteristics of the bourbon, um, seeing as it's a little bit high proof, uh, it's at 43.2, so um, it's got a little bit more, it's got a high rye mash bill in the mash bill, so uh, that's why we went with uh, spices such as ginger juice and uh, infusing uh, the bittersweet uh, Italian liqueur from Venice, uh, Aperol, uh, with horseradish, so it's like those two um, basically giving it a little bit more of a complex flavor profile with the spice aspect. Um, and then Sounds going, delicious. Yeah, and then going with the carrot juice, which uh, really mellows the, the spiciness, because some people like spice, but not so much. So it's like uh, we're trying to find the middle way, the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how have you found the, uh, the English here as opposed to the uh, Norwegians in the bar? Uh, the, the culture for drinking yes. um, obviously in London uh, as well as uh, New York is quite advanced those are the two stalemates of the, the cocktail um, industry I feel like the bar industry those, those two are you know, the guiding lights um, so uh, with, uh, I feel they're very very intrigued uh, by what we do uh, seeing as we're so niche within the, the bar community in Oslo uh, so, like, you know, having a bar and a distillery in the same same house and you know you, you see guys making cocktails and then you see the copper pot still right next door making gin as you speak you know as you as you talk and, and uh, have a drink uh, with your friends so it's uh, such an uh, interesting dynamic uh, for a speakeasy set the name sounds appropriate then Himkook as very, Moonshine very appro very it's appropriate. really in the bathroom back there that yeah, they're making and, stuff and, and from, from working with the guys they've been telling me almost uh the, the history between uh, Sweden and Norway and, and all the Danish all the Scandi countries uh, from the prohibition um, which has been extensive more so than back in prohibition times uh, for America which only lasted 13 years it lasted for um, yeah, more than a few decades that's uh, to say the least we still don't want to talk about the horror of prohibition we we'll no. remind ourselves about that no but that's uh, it, it, from, from, from those uh, those uh, versions or those uh, there's little obstacles um, industries can thrive and they can overcome um, these obstacles, which is um, really interesting because uh, with the laws in place in Norway, there's so many interesting ways of uh, producing and, and showcasing cocktails uh, for, for the public to enjoy. So that's, that's a really interesting dynamic, I feel, um, especially in Norway. And coming to, to London to showcase what we, what we do and what we, we're passionate about, um, and their take on things because here the, 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 the public is very, very, very forward in the sense that they, their, their palate is very well, well developed. So they know um, if a cocktail is in balance or not. If it's, uh, you know, if it's to their liking, then that's a, that's a really good indication of us and all the bars that are here and you know, showcasing their cocktails or cocktails in the city. So the bar uh, that Andreas owns and me managing, it's been open for five years. Uh, it's in an area of, of Stockholm, which is, uh, uh, used to be a kind of a shady area. And now it's becoming a cool area because, you know... Because um, you arrived. Uh, we arrived, and, you know, younger people search for that area because maybe it started off with uh, low rents and, you know, cheaper housing. Uh, so they can move in there, but now it eventually started to become like a, more of a trendy area. And also, uh, uh, it's a 
it's an old working class area, which means that they built a lot of um, apartments that are like uh, one rooms. So we have a lot of like single people work uh, living there. You know, like going out on on the weekdays and weekends. You know, having a trying to meet up with friends or you know find trying to find a partner. <laughs> we also have a, a kind of a. Uh, a younger couple crowd, you know, uh, who also likes to you know, go out dining and, and stuff like that. We, we call them dinks. <laughs> Double income, no kids. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, but is there a Swedish translation of that? Oh, no, no. no, no, no that's dinks. actually, the, I think it's an American expression, yeah. actually. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, Dual income, no children, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, like the crowd is very vibrant, you know, uh, so we, we, we tend to have a, since uh, we aim for quality, uh, a lot uh, we get like a, a crowd like every day of the week so we're pretty much packed seven nights a week and the impetus for creating the bar the, me? sorry the impetus for creating the bar why why we yeah. opened so to be honest like me and uh, my partner Joel who's uh, back in Stockholm working we wanted to open our own place we've been working together since we were 19 friends since we were 15 and uh, really wanted to open our own place before we turned 30 we were working together in Stockholm for 10 years and an opportunity came around to open this place uh, in Hurstull in a neighborhood where I've been living in since I was 21 you were lives there as well and it was a really fun thing to do there because there was nothing there pretty much I've been living there for 10 years. It's only been drug addicts and... Uh, finally, and finally, you have some place to drink. Yeah, exactly. So now I have somewhere to drink and all the drug addicts have somewhere to go. No, I'm kidding. No, but it's actually, the area's changing a lot and that's fun. And we've been a very big part of the change. I mean, you can talk about gentrification if you want to. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we're a part of that. But we try to... Our idea with Shogit is to uh, try to keep a little bit of that feeling, a little bit of rough feeling that was around. But, you know... Take it to into the modern it, world, you know. To keep it really a neighborhood place. Yeah, because it is a neighborhood place. You, you know, should, you should tell about why you say Shogat. Okay, so so, so there's like, it's like this: our place, the whole establishment, is called Shogat, which means twenty in Swedish. Um, at Shogat, you can go to a barber shop, a wine bar, or a restaurant and cocktail bar. The barber shop is called Roy and Son. The wine bar is called the Bodega. And the cocktail bar and restaurant is called Linje Tia. So a lot of people confuse it. We call it Shoget. Some people call it Linje Tia. When we explain it to people, we call it Shoget Linje Tia because that's everybody knows <laughs> those two. This. So this wow. is just really complicated. But you know, we call it Shoget. We have it on recording. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We call it Shoget for sure. This. Yeah. And how are you here at Cocktails in the City? So uh, Andrew, the founder, uh, he. Uh, he contacted me through another guy, like a uh, mutual friend, uh, and he wanted to, uh, him and Woodford Reserve Bourbon, they wanted to gather uh, three of Nordic bars, um, the three main cities. Um, sorry, sorry, Finland, but you were not included this time. But um, Next year. Next year. Next year. Uh, so we started off with uh, Copenhagen, Stockholm, and, and, and Oslo. Uh, and the drink you're making? The drink we're making uh, is pretty much based on like the flavors we, we do in, at uh, Shogit. Uh, we have a, a classic drink that, that was, we call the Bay of Biscay. You know the Bay of Biscay um, in the French coast. We um, try to implement the flavors of the area. So we use cognac, uh, a, a French dry cider from Normandy, uh, and also some ginger, lime, um, and some bitters. But this time we, we, uh, we switched it off a little bit since we're using bourbon. I wanted to um, incorporate the flavors so it uh, matches better than like uh, ginger and stuff for bourbon. So we put a peach liqueur, some fino sherry, uh, bourbon, some lemon, some sugar for, you know, gather the, the flavors. And also top it off with a, a British uh, local cider just to... Um, Pop it off and make it a little bit more uh, dry and complex. That sounds delicious. I think you it need is. to make me one right now. Yeah, we will. We will. We will. We will. Thanks to all of them for giving me five minutes during a very hectic Cocktails in the City. A special thank you goes to Andrew Scott, who began Cocktails in the City many moons ago and hasn't looked back. I appreciate him letting me crash the event to interview these great bartenders. 
Next year, I'm going to have to pop in to Oslo, Stockholm, and Copenhagen to visit them on site. His grandparents made limoncello. His parents sent him to work in a bar at 12 years old. Coffee bar, that is. It's no wonder our guest next time found himself behind a bar. From a tiny town in southern Italy, Alfonso Califano and I sit around the table to discover why he ended up in London. Until next time, bottoms up. For more information and links to everything you've heard about, plus a bit more, please visit bestbitsworldwide.com. Thanks for listening to Best Sips Worldwide, a spin-off of Best Bits Worldwide. Always remember the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation, and never drink and drive. Okay, I said that last part. Theme music is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. You'll find me at the bar. <laughs>